Now, those are kind of the real easy things. Let's talk really about the accessories. If you have a motorhome, you don't have to worry about this. You've got a parking brake, etc. If you have a travel trailer, pop-up trailer, single axle, double axle, fifth wheel, when you park that unit, you should be stabilizing it. Now, what a lot of people will do is they'll get four by four blocks of wood and they'll put the wood at the wheels. The wood is fine, but I'm gonna tell you over time, it smells, it gets dirt all over it, it gets mud all over it, it holds the humidity, it's gonna make your storage compartment on your trailer stink. So if you wanna take a low cost route, these are actually um, units that have been, uh, they've been used here at the dealership. Uh, so these are not brand new. They've probably been used for multiple years and you can see the condition of them. Wheel chocks. You can buy these, they're anywhere from six to $12, depending on the size and the type you get. Um, I like, and I like the ones that have the little strings on them. So you put them in under the wheels, you can grab them with the strings and pull them out. They're also handy to carry. You're gonna want two aside, so typically there's four. And that way, even though you have a tandem axle trailer, you don't need to do every wheel. Do one wheel on one side, one wheel on the other. Some people have even said they do one on one side and they put one the opposite side of the trailer, one going forward, one on the back side. I like to say, buy four of them, put them in. Uh, now I have actually traveled with the x chalk styles or the one steps. There's multiple names out there. The ones I'm using are actually the fast way one steps. I apologize, I meant to bring them down and I have them packed up in my garage and forgot to bring them. But basically what they look like, and I'll post a link to the X1 uh, vi video. Basically what they look like is they point outwards and there's two bars in the center that pop up. And you drop it in between the wheels, you snug out the chalk side of it, and then you step on it. And what it does is when you step on it, that brace pushes this out. So you're placing it in between your, your uh, tandem axle trailer wheels. So they're good for fifth wheels, they're also good for regular travel trailers. Um, it pushes it out and what it does is it keeps the trailer from having that bit of movement. Some people are very sensitive, especially if you have any kind of motion sickness, they're sensitive to that movement, that helps reduce it a little bit. Now, this will be the first year that I will be using those with automatic leveling systems on this fifth wheel. So I'll have to report back what it's gonna be like, but I think it should be fine because you'll put it down, it'll snug it up because with automatic leveling, you should never be bringing your wheels up off the ground. So there's a couple of differences. There are a couple of options. There's a few, uh, BAL has an X chalk that you put up on the tires in between. So they're a little different. The difference is you're, as I said, six to $12 on these. So you're usually gonna be 28 to $40 for four chalks. You get the fancier ones like I'm talking about, you can be anywhere from 60 to $100 per chalk and you'll need two of them. So something to think about. Now, in my opinion, a very good must to have. Um, I don't use it as much, but there's some accessories you're better to have and not need than need it and not have it. Because your dealer will sell you an extension cord. This is a 30 amp. We'll sell you an extension cord for a lot cheaper than a park store will. Sorry, park stores, don't get mad at me because it's a, I need it now when you're at the park and most people aren't buying it as, as frequently as a dealership is selling it. So a dealership can sell it for less 
because they're getting volume deals where mar most park stores aren't going to go through the same volume. An extension cord is nice, especially if you're doing some provincial campgrounds in Canada. Some of them have really odd placements of the power and you just can't reach. Your typical cord on a trailer is going to be somewhere from 15 to 25 feet. Most are about 15 to 20 feet and you can get 25 to 50 foot extension cords. Now if you have a 50 amp unit you want to save some money on an extension cord, get a 30 amp extension. Step the unit down when you need to use this cord because likely you're not going to be wanting to draw 50 amps when you're in a provincial campground, okay? And in some places when you have to use these, they don't have the 50 amp service anyways, they have 30 or they have 15. So you can buy 50 amp cords, there's two downsides, okay, compared to the upside. The upside, it's 50 amps. You can run your entire 50 amp unit on that cord, it's designed for it. The downside is, one, they're really bulky because they are, you'll notice the thickness of this cord, they are much, much, much thicker because they're pulling much more amperage through and they take a lot of space because you cannot roll a 50 amp that small. There's no way you can do it. Even a 25 foot cord will not roll this small. So they're very bulky, very heavy, take a lot of storage space, and then when you see the price at the cash register, please be sitting down, because you will fall over when you get the quote for the price. A 25 amp, 50, a uh, 25 amp, 25 foot, 50 amp cord is going to be more money than a 50 foot, 30 amp cord. So never mind you try to get a 50 foot, 50 amp. You're going to get a shot when you see the price. So travel with a 30 amp. It's more than enough. It's also good at home if you need to run that length. Anytime you're running length, run a thicker cord, much better for the RV. And then if you're just plugging it into 15 amps, so I put it away already. Remember that reducer? Put your reducer on it. Step it down to 15 amps. Plug it into your house. Now, talking about power, there's a couple of things that we can look at, and these are musts. So, extension cord, you don't have to have it. I've had a lot of people say they think about it, and they never buy one, because they go years and years and never need it. So, this is a maybe on the list. Toilet chemicals, an absolute must. Your starter kit, an absolute must. Your Max Air, maybe. I think it's a must, but it could be a maybe for most people. One thing that is an absolute must that we're now going to talk about are surge guard. You just spent a whack of money. I don't care if you're spending eighteen to twenty-five thousand dollars on a pop-up trailer, twenty-five you know, 25 to 30 on a single axle trailer, whether it's a teardrop or a regular single axle, or if you're spending 30 to $100,000 on a travel trailer, 50 to $200,000 on a fifth wheel, or 150 to a million dollars plus on a motorhome, surge guard is super important. Let me ask you a question. If it wasn't important, why would high-end manufacturers like American Coach, Holiday Rambler Monaco, the New Mars, not all New Mars, but you can option it, but every American Coach, every Monaco, newer, the new Holiday Ramblers, all have built-in surge guards. Why is that? You think it's a selling feature? No, because a lot of new RVers have no idea about it. It's because they want to protect the coach. It will save you as the consumer a lot of aggravation. I have seen customers come in 
probably one of the worst scenarios was a gentleman who had his motorhome store in his, I'm gonna say barn slash garage. He had a large storage facility that he stored his motorhome in, was plugged in to maintain the batteries. They had a storm come through. A Couple of weeks later, he went in his unit and it was doing funny things. TVs wouldn't come on. Some stuff came on, went off. Came on, went off. Brought it into the shop at the dealership. The whole unit was fried. Needed a new fridge, needed new air conditioners, all new TVs, new microwaves. It had taken such a surge, it fried the coach. So, you're investing a lot of money. You've worked hard for that money. Spend the little bit and be protected. Now, what I'm gonna do, I think rather than bring the phone to it, I'm gonna bring you the units. There are typically a few different style units. I like the TRC Surge Guard. Had a lot of luck with them, been very reliable. So I'm gonna show you a couple of units in the TRC line. They typically have an entry level, mid level, and a higher end surge guard. I'll tell you which one I recommend after I show them to you, and I'll explain why in this process. Now, the entry level one, they don't carry. Bella Vista doesn't carry. We did a few years ago, we brought them in, they're so entry level, and we only brought them in because they looked like a really great price. But when you see them, they're very small, very chintzy. They're a great price. They just, they're basic. They're better than nothing, but realistically, for, I think it was $40, you could go up to a better surge bar. So, I've actually run a couple of extension cords so you can see this close. This is the mid-level surge guard. Now, this is a model from about a year and a half ago. They change the looks every couple of years, but basically they do the same thing. The surge guards will typically come in 30 amp and 50 amp surge guards. Today, we're gonna to show you 30 amps just for simple ease of use. They're basically the same other than the end is going to be different. So 30 amps is gonna have a 30 amp plug that you're gonna plug into the post and a female 30 ends side that you're gonna plug the trailer into. Now with the mid-level guards, what I recommend, plug this into the post first and watch what it reads. So I'm gonna bring this up and you're gonna notice there's two lights up here and there's a diagram that tells you, you know, two green lights, you've got power, everything's good. Uh, you got an open neutral if it's green and white. You've got an open ground if it's white and green. You've got reverse polarity if it's red and green. So very straightforward, very simple. Now a lot of customers will ask me, well, if I buy this, but you know, I don't know if I need this because I'm going to a campground and they only have 15 amps is the campground I'm gonna be at. So what do I do? I can't get a 15 amp one. That's a simple solution. Remember that little 30 amp reducer? Now this is a slightly different version of it. So you'll notice, same thing, just different shape, different color. Take that, slide that on to the end of your surge guard plug it in. Now the reason I say plug it in, when I show you here, you'll notice, and I'm gonna do this, I have some backlighting running. We're gonna turn that off so you can see it better. You can actually see two green lights, so we have power, we're good, there's no issues. That's why I say plug this in first. You're gonna plug it in, and of course this is our post, right? You're gonna plug it in, and then it's gonna tell you if it's okay, now plug the trailer into it, if it's this one. This is very reasonable in price, it's an affordable option, and this is what you want if you're just keeping a limited budget is what you have to work with. Now realistically, 
there's another option. And so we're gonna reach over here, and what we will do is we're gonna plug this in. And this one gives you a little more protection. You could plug your trailer, your fifth wheel, or your motorhome into it, and then plug this into the post, but realistically do the same thing. Plug it in and watch it. Now, this is gonna be more expensive. You're several hundred dollars. You're anywhere typically from about you know, 300 and change to $600, whether it's a 30 or a 50 amp. This again is a 30 amp. And, oops, sorry, knocking my other power cord off the table. Um, what it's going to do is it has an LCD display. It's not only a surge guard, but it also watches for voltage changes. And I'll explain more in a second. So what you're noticing, you're gonna notice here there's a countdown. When you plug this unit in, it's going to count for 122 seconds, two minutes basically. And while it's doing that, it's actually monitoring the power that's coming through. Because power is a wave, and when you're in the center of that wave, it's good solid power. If you're at the high end of the wave, that's a surge. If you're at the bottom end, it's a brownout. And the way to describe brownouts, because when I say brownouts, a number of you will be going, what are you talking about? What a brownout is, is have you ever been sitting at home and you've noticed your lights dim and go bright very quickly, just dim and bright? And you'll go, did I see that right? Did something happen? Dim and bright again. That's voltage dropping. Electronic equipment hates that. Brownouts kill your equipment, but kill them slowly. The difference I would describe to customers is think of you and I standing together. A surge is me making a fist. Ah, hear that click? Stopped counting, and it told us power is okay. It's now let power go out. I'll go back to the story. So that's you and I standing together. A surge is me making a fist, winding up and hitting you on your shoulder. And you're gonna turn around and look at me and go, oh my God, Bruno, what did you do? That really hurt. A brownout is me taking my fist and gently tapping you on the shoulder. But I'm gonna tap you for the next one to two hours. When I stop, you're gonna turn around and your, soul, your sh uh, shoulder is sore. It's sore and it's turning black and blue. But you haven't noticed it because I'm just lightly tapping, lightly tapping. That's your brownout, it's dropping voltage. It's affecting your, your computer equipment, your digital equipment. Just killing it slowly and slowly and slowly. And you're gonna think, well, Bruno, I don't have a whole bunch of computer equipment in my trailer. It's a trailer, for goodness sake. You do. What do you think runs your fridge? There's a computer board. Computer board in your hot water heater. Computer board in your furnace. Computer board in your air conditioner. You have electronics. Never mind the TV and the DVD player, etc. There are electronics in all of your equipment. So, you want to watch the brownouts. What's nice with this surge guard, and again, they've changed the look of it a little bit. The packaging looks different, basically does the same thing. What happens, and I've been there, where I've been camping, someone came in, plugged into the post that was set for both sites, and all of a sudden, I was in a motorhome. Power went off because I noticed anything on 110 went off and anything 12 volt stayed on because of the battery bank. I had one of these surge guards. When I peeked out the window right away, there was a big fifth wheel and I could see him walking away from the post and I heard his air conditioners kick on. When he left the last campground, he didn't turn his air conditioners off. They must have been off and he unplugged. Now when he plugged in, it was hot and his coach 
called for the air conditioners and there was a surge of power to his unit pulling away from other campsites causing a voltage drop. This stopped that voltage drop from occurring, recounted its 122 seconds and let power back in. So it's working to protect your unit. More expensive, but definitely worth it. Also has a bigger um, surge. Here we have 2,450 joules of surge protection where on this unit we have 2100. So you'll notice, now when you go to a 50 amp, you'll notice it's a lot more surge protection. Also, I'm gonna bring this up so you can see the little screen switching. Right now we're not drawing any amperage because we're not connected to an RV, but you're gonna see line one, and usually this'll tell you on that line one, it'll tell you how much amperage you're actually bringing in and consuming in the unit. If you have a 50 amp, it's gonna show you L1, leg one, and there'll be an L2, leg two. Because 50 amps is bringing two draws in to the unit. And you'll see how much amperage you're bringing on each of those legs that's feeding different accessories in your unit. So great little thing to also tell you what's going on. Now, if you invest in this more expensive unit, there is a locking hasp. It's basically a special cover that locks over. You connect this to your RV cord, put the locking hasp on it, put a bull, uh, bolt, put a deadbolt style lock, uh, or padlock, I should say, sorry. Put a padlock on it, and it's locking this to your RV cord so nobody gets tempted to steal it. Because as I said, 50 amps can be up in that five, $600 range. But this is worth every, every dollar. Uh, best story I can tell you from this is we had a gentleman who many, many years ago spent um, about $33,000 on a trailer. And this goes back seven years ago now. So that was pretty expensive at that time. And this conversation was had with him. He purchased just this one. That's what his budget allowed. He purchased this and did exactly what I just explained to you. Take this, plug it into the post. He got to a campground, first camping trip. Plugged this into the post. When he came in to tell us about it, he said, Bruno, all I heard was a pop and my surge guard went dead read nothing it killed the surge guard somebody was getting ready to just leave on that site it was a little later so he couldn't get to the camp um, office he asked the gentleman if they had had any issues they said no he plugged in on that side went to the camp office the next morning told them what happened they came down or they came down, they sent someone down to inspect it. And yep, there was a problem with the post. Somebody had fiddled with it. And you'll have to forgive me, I forget exactly what happened if they had a loose connection and it was causing it to short. It killed his surge guard. Had he plugged his trailer into it, it would have fried the entire trailer. Can you imagine spending over $30,000, your first camping trip, frying your trailer. Now, the key is, you're gonna think, well, I got insurance. No. If you have a lightning strike and a surge because of a lightning strike, a number of insurance agents or insurance coverages will likely cover you. Check your coverages. If it's from being plugged in, you're not gonna get covered. It's not the campground's fault either because the little contract you sign when you rent the space says it's not their issue if you have an electrical problem. At the time, I don't even think this was, I think this was a hundred and change for the mid-level one or around a hundred bucks, something like that. 
that saved his 30,000 plus trailer from frying all the equipment. So definitely a must in my books. Um, if you have a fifth wheel, some, some people like the pin hitch up. Sorry, I'm gonna get the name wrong now. The pin stands that you basically put it underneath your pin, takes a bit of bounce off, especially in the front end. Those are, uh, again, maybe you want one, maybe you don't. But those are your basic accessories. In my eyes, most of them must haves. Personally, if you're gonna buy it, buy all the ones I just showed you. You'll have a much better camping experience. So let me know some comments of what you thought about this video. If you have any questions about the accessories and talk to some RVers and they'll tell you what they find handy. Now, don't get me wrong. There's a lot more accessories you can purchase. Camping mats, I recommend that. They're a great thing to have. Give you a nice clean space to come in and out of your unit. But we could make a master list super long. One item we didn't talk about here that if you're gonna do a lot of boondocking, a lot of traveling out on the road is a generator. Didn't talk about that here. Come back, we're gonna do another video. I'm gonna show you guys the generator that we're going to use with our fifth wheel that we've purchased. Um, and I'll explain that in another video, so come on back. Now, if you like the video, please click the like button. Please subscribe. We're trying to reach the 10,000 subscriber mark and upwards. So we would really appreciate you subscribing and telling your friends about us. Send us your comments. If you have questions, send us your questions. I try to respond in a timely manner on all the questions that are put onto the channel. And press the bell below if you subscribe and that will notify you of new videos as they're posted. So Bruno from RVing TV saying thanks. Appreciate you watching the video. Hope you enjoyed it and we'll talk to you soon. Just remember to live the good life. Make sure you're enjoying life at every moment that you can. Take care.